Hi everybody, Colin Ross, TMCC Music 101 Lecture 17. All right, today we are going to cover two separate subjects, uh, each of which are divided into some smaller subjects. The two main things we are going to do is we are going to add to our chord vocabulary and our chord symbol vocabulary uh, with add nines and add uh, six chords and add nine chords and dominant extension chords. And we are also going to discuss modes, especially um, the Dorian, Mixolydian, and Phrygian modes. So those are our main subjects and it may be helpful for you to access the lecture notes that I posted on Canvas for this lecture and follow along because I'm going to try and stay right with the notes. All right. So the first thing we're going to talk about is a sixth chord. And the symbol is just whatever the root name is and the number six. So for instance, a C sixth chord. So a sixth chord consists of the root, the third, the fifth, and the sixth. One, three, five, six. That's the sound of a sixth chord. Here it is in F. sixth chord. Now, um, a couple of things about the sixth chord. Uh, one is that uh, we can fit it into our sequence of how we've named our chords um, by going, uh, well, I'm just going to take the camera over to the piano for just a second here. I hope I don't make you all dizzy. All right, so here we are looking at our sixth chord in the key of C. Root, third, fifth, sixth. We're up here where the... Now, one, a couple things about it. First of all, let's fit it into our sequence of how we identify any kind of chord symbol. Here's C with a double octave, C major seven by lowering the seventh, C seven, I lowered the seventh again, C minor seven, I lowered the third, C minor seven, flat five, C diminished seven. So here we are back up to C with a doubled octave, C, C major seven, C seven. If we go down one more, that's C six. So that's one more to add to the sequence. Here's C with a doubled octave, C major seven, C seven. There it is, C six. And if we go back to the regular sequence, I like to do it C, C major seven, C seven, C minor seven, C minor seven, flat five, C diminished seven. And then I go back to C, C, C major seven, C six. All right, so that's the C sixth chord. Another thing to notice about the C sixth chord, it is an inversion of a minor seventh chord. So if we call C the root, we have root, third, fifth, sixth. But if I call A the root, I have root, minor third, fifth, minor sevenths. So a C6 chord is the same exact notes as an A minor seventh chord, but just in a different order. Remember we talked about inversions? So here's C6, first inversion, I move the lowest note up an octave. Second inversion, I move the lowest note up an octave. Third inversion, now I'm on an A minor seventh chord. So a minor seventh is the same notes as a C minor sixth chord. It's a matter of which note is in the bass. If I put this note in the bass, it's an A minor seventh chord. If I put the C in the bass, it's a C sixth chord. Also, in our uh, Let It Be example, at the bottom of page one, we see an F sixth chord there on the Mother Mary comes to me on the word me. And if we look back and what, see what the chord actually is, in the right hand he has D, F, A, and C, which is a D minor seventh chord. But in the left hand, where was I? In the left hand, we have an F. So if we add the F down here, now it's a D sixth chord, I mean an F sixth chord. Root, 
third, fifth, sixth. With the sixth here, root, root, third, fifth, sixth. But the root is down here. So if we take the right hand by itself, we have a D minor seven chord. Ba -da -da -da. Root, minor, third, fifth, minor, seventh. But if we include the bass note, now it's a root, six, 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 root, third, fifth. Sorry, that's out of my range. All right, so that is a sixth chord. And um, now we're going to look at an add nine chord or an add two chord. And they are the same thing. They are sometimes written with the word add and sometimes written with uh, a little plus sign, but the plus sign is um, a little bit mischievous because it can be mistaken for a sharp nine, which is something else. All right, <clears throat> so an add two or an add nine <clears throat> is just like what it says, you add two. So C, add two, here's one, two, three, five. Or if it's an add nine, it's one. The only difference being whether it's up an octave or down an octave. Here's an add nine, here's an add two. It's a very nice sound and it's often used to, um, in contemporary folk and singer-songwriter music to add a little bit of dissonance without making it sound um, as dissonant as it would uh, if it was a ninth chord. All right, so. The difference between an add nine and a nine chord, and if you look at your notes, you'll see this in the notes, is that for every note uh, above an octave that in a chord symbol, it always assumes that it's a flat seventh, like built on a C7. So if I say C9, it means that it's built on a C7 chord with a ninth. If it says C add nine, there's no seventh. C chord add the ninth. But if it's a C9, it assumes that it's built on the flat seventh chord, the dominant seventh chord. So it's a C seventh chord with a ninth if it says C9. Same if it says C13. If it says C6, it's root, third, fifth, sixth. If it says C13, now you notice that the, the sixth and the thirteenth are the same note. They're both A. One, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. They're both A. It's just up an octave. So if it says a 13th chord, that means that it's built on a 7th chord, dominant 7th chord with the flat 7th, root 3rd, 5th, 7th, and it adds the 13th. So here's the sound of the... I'm going to move back over here. So in practice... Here's the sound of a C6 chord. Here's the sound of a C13 chord. I got that flat seventh in there. Root. Here's the root. If I put the seventh there, the flat seventh, the B flat, now the E, now the A. That's a 13th chord. This is a sixth chord. This is an add nine chord. This is a ninth chord. I didn't make any of this system up. It seems counterintuitive that it would always be built on the flat seventh, especially since that's not the one that would naturally occur in the scale. So if it says C13, it's assuming a flat seven, even though that the natural uh, seventh in the scale would be B natural, it's gonna have the B flat in it. So, um, Add two or add nine does not have a seventh. A sixth chord does not have a seventh. But a thirteenth, a ninth, a raised eleventh, or any combination thereof, or a flat nine or a raised nine, they're all built on a seventh chord. So here's a here's a seventh chord. Here's a nine. Here's a raised nine. Here's a flat nine.
always hear raise nines in this, not always, you frequently hear this raise nine sound on guitars, the, um, like the opening of the Hendrix or whatever. There's the raise nine right there. Anyway, um, where was I? All right, so, um, that takes us through the second paragraph of, uh, of the chord symbols explanation there. So uh, now we are going to move on to our modes. We've already discussed uh, some of the modes. We already named them all, and we've done uh, quite a bit with major and minor, which are uh, Aeolian and um, Ionian. Ionian is major. <laughs> Aeolian is natural minor, which is six to six of the major, as we've discussed, or whole, half, whole, whole, half, whole, whole. And um, we went through how the chords are different in the in uh, the different key in the different modes, even though the set of notes that we're dealing with is the same. I also mentioned the rest of the modes. So one to one of a major scale is Ionian. 2 to 2 of a major scale is Dorian, which is also start on a note and go whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half, whole step, half step, whole. So start on a note and go whole, half, whole, 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 half, whole. One, two, three. to think of Dorian and this is this is the way it gets used a lot it's like a minor but with a major sixth scale degree instead of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like regular minor one two three four five major six seven eight you hear this quite a bit in uh, different types of Irish music and folk music of all kinds especially Irish music it's very popular in Irish music um, let's see here here, I'll play you an example of, uh, this is an ancient Irish tune, and this is called The Road to Liz de Varna. It's in E Dorian. So it's the same as a D scale. Scale, but starting on E. So here's my D scale. Except that it's starting on E. So this is the road to Liz Davarna. One, two, three, four, five, major six, seven, eight. So that's the, the that's a Dorian tune, and um, also from a harmonic standpoint, one of the very characteristic sounds of Dorian is that sound of the minor minor chord going to the major four chord. It's in E Dorian, so it's in the same as a D scale. But so there's the one to the flat seven chord. The one is minor, and the flat seven chord is major. I'm going E minor to D major, and then back to E minor. Six 
scale degree, and here's that flat seven scale degree. So that's the sound of Dorian. stopping on the two. Now the, what used to become the one is now the flat seven. So if we're in C, and if we're going to be in C Dorian, that it's very popular in jazz also. Uh, for instance, the, the famous Miles Davis tune, So What? Probably the single most uh, used scale in metal and in, in amongst the shredders. Um, a lot of that is Dorian. Not all of it, a lot of it is Dorian. A lot of it's harmonic minor also. But if you can uh, learn to blaze on your scales on Dorian and harmonic minor, you're three quarters of the way to being a metal player. <laughs> this thing wind up so tilted, I hate that. All right. So. Um, the next mode we're going to talk about is Mixolydian mode, um, and it is the same as 5 to 5 of the relative scale, so uh, of the relative major scale. So for instance, G, Dor uh, G Mixolydian is the same notes as C major. And the main difference is the flat 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, flat 7, A. If it was major, it would be a regular major 7 there. One, two, three, four, five, six, major seven, eight. But it's mixolydian, so there's a flat seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven, eight. You can also think of it as starting on the note, one, and going full step, full step, half step, full step, full step, half step, full step. Or five to five of the relative major. So here we are in C. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if we rename five as one, but play the same set of notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, flat, seven, eight. That's Mixolydian. Flat, seven, four. So one of the characteristic sounds of Mixolydian is that, um, that the, the one and the flat, seven, and the four are the major chords. Five is minor. Mixolydian, let's see. Thank you. 
also a lot of, of country music, lots of folk music, lots of rock and roll has, uh, has that flat seven sound in it. Um, so that's, that's Mixolydian. Sounds a lot like major, functions a lot like major. That flat seven. So that's the characteristic sound of Mixolydian. Extremely popular in rock and roll, country, folk, less so in jazz, um, less so in um, classical, but very popular in country and folk and also Irish music and, and any kind of folk and rock and roll, especially classic rock. <clears throat> lots of, uh, lots of, lots of uh, flat sevens in classic rock. Um, all right. Um, next subject, frigid mode. So frigid mode is from three to three of the major scale. So here we are in C. And if we start on three, we'll make that our new home. cliche of um, the Spanish bullfighter music or anything Moorish or anything vaguely uh, Spanish or perhaps uh, with a nylon string guitar going blah, 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 that's um, frigid mode. And the characteristic sound that you're hearing is the flat two as a major chord. So here we are in E minor is the one chord, but F major is the two chord, only up a half there. guitars in the key of E, Phrygian. E minor, F major, G major, F major, E minor. That's the, that's the cliche sound of Phrygian mode. And um, there's a huge, of course, long and uh, complicated tradition of Spanish and Moorish and um, Southern European and Northern African music that employs those, that scale, but um, it's almost become a cliche in Western music to signify something Spanish or perhaps Mexican. So, uh, so it's three to three of the relative major scale, or you can think of it as start on the root and go half step, full step, full step, whole step, half step, full step, whole step. And it's all right here in your notes. And um, so here's the Phrygian scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, the typical sound of Phrygian, and um, that's our subject matter for today. And so, quick review as we went through the difference between um, six chords and add nine chords, and thirteenth chords and ninth chords, which is that all the extension chords of something above an octave assume it is made on a flat seventh, a dom dominant seventh chord, root, third, fifth, flat seventh. So if it's a ninth or a flat nine, or raised nine, or thirteen, or raised eleven, or any of those combinations, which are some of the popular jazz chords, always assumes that it's built on a dominant seventh chord.
even though it doesn't say flat seven. It has to have the flat seven in it. Um, <clears throat> that's uh, the first part of the, of the lecture. And if you look at the chord symbols to do with that, you'll um, see that uh, that it'll usually say add two now for most of those ones that they want the one that's not the seventh, and it'll just say a six for the ones that they want the sixth and not the flat seventh, as opposed to a 13, even though it's the same note. And we went through Dorian and Mixolydian and Phrygian mode. And one of the things that I wanted to emphasize about uh, modes is that they're very popular in uh, a lot of folk music and, and uh, rock music and uh, simpler forms of music uh, song-wise because you can take the same set of gestures and the same chords. Let's say I'm in, let's say I only know G, C, and D. So if I'm playing, I know G, C, and D. Those are the three chords that I've learned. And, and um, so if I want to be in G, I have the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord. The one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I'm in major. But if I want to play in C, and I only know those chords, what you got cooking? Now I got a major dominant a, a substitute chord as the two chord. I have a chord that's not in the scale as the two chord. So I have the instead of a minor two chord that would ordinarily fall in that scale, I have a major two chord. that actually puts me in a different mode. Or if I want to be in the key of D with those same three chords, here I am in the key of D. There's that flat seven chord that puts me in Mixolydian. So I can write a whole different kind of song with a whole different set of feeling to the melody structure. As opposed to being in major. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So um, with the same set of gestures, I can be in three different keys because I can be in different modes. Likewise, um, instruments like the recorder that have, it's possible to play all the half steps on the recorder, but it's a lot easier not to. So if you're looking at recorder fingering, for instance, Here's my C scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And if I keep going up, D, E, remember D is this open one, nothing on the back either, D, E, F, G. So if I'm in the key of C, for instance, I'm going to put a little drone on here. So now I'm in the key of C. Here's my C. fingerings, but now I'm going to put us in the key of D by making the drone be the D. Same exact note. Now I'm in D Dorian. I'm using the same exact fingering I was on the first sample, but now because the drone is in D, you're automatically hearing it in D Dorian, same set of notes. We 
haven't gotten to Lydian yet, which would be four to four, but we'll come back to that. So far we've skipped Lydian, which is from four to four of the relative major, and we've skipped Locrian also, which is seven to seven of the major scale. But moving on to Mixolydian, which is five to five of the major scale. So here I am playing the same exact fingerings of the C scale notes, but now my drone is on the G. A, so now it's going to be natural minor. Each time I did the little twinkle twinkle sample because it's, it changes what the intervals are, but I was still going one one five five six six five of that particular mode. All right, so that's why modes are so important in, in music of all kinds, but especially in folk music of various kinds, because uh, with a relatively limited number of gestures, fingerings, and or positions, um, you can generate a whole lot of different kinds of sounds and a whole lot of different kinds of moods. Also, there's instruments like, for instance, the um, lap dulcimer here uh, that is sort of like the recorder in the fact that the scales are built into it a little. The recorder, you can actually get at the, the notes that are in between, um, and I'll show you those fingerings later. But with an instrument like this, you can see that the whole steps and half steps of the scale are built right into the instrument itself. There is no, so for instance, if I start here and decide that this is one, then I got whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, half step. They built one extra one there. So you have a choice of two different modes. But um, you see that the scale is built right into it. They did include the one extra half step, so if I wanted to be in mixolydian in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then I have my choice of flat seven or regular seven and an eight. So the scales are built right into it. So if I decide that this is one, by tuning the drone to... Now this is one. Now I'm in Dorian. So many folk instruments have the modes built physically into them in some way. Um, like I said, with the recorders, um, the half steps are available. If you take, uh, for instance, the, the low whistle, this is a traditional Irish low whistle. <coughs> Excuse me, the fingering just goes straight up. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And when you get to here, it's back to eight, but you just blow harder. And also, if you're here, putting these down to hold it doesn't seem to matter any. So here we go, one. This is a D. So eight and one are the same, I just blow harder. Also help to think the other pitch. So if this is a D, I could be in D major. Get the concept without changing the fingering, I can be in all those different modes. So that's why modes are so important, especially in folk music and traditional music. All right, good luck.